Did you ever stop to think about a baby's first introduction to speech? <laughs> Yet, in spite of all the kitschy coos and glub glubs, little Freddy gradually feels the need for communication, and soon his first word, Mama, becomes a major event in his life and the lives of his parents. However, once Freddy gets the hang of things and starts chattering away, the parents often do a complete about-face, and it's not unusual to hear something like this. Freddy, will you please be quiet? Can't you see I'm trying to read the paper? Well, why does the wind blow? Freddy. Okay. As the years pass, Fred's ability to communicate becomes as much a part of him as the clothes on his back. In fact, he takes his speech so much for granted that it's natural that he should ask his advisor, Well, but why should I study speech? I can talk just as well as the next fellow, and so far I haven't heard any complaints. Oh, I'll grant you that, Fred. But consider it this way. How many situations have you been in so far in your life where it's been necessary for someone else to evaluate your effectiveness as a speaker? Oh, there have been some, no doubt. But for you, the most important instances are yet to come. And what do you think these situations will be like if you can't express yourself as an effective speaker? Let's see, you're a candidate for class president, aren't you? Well, Fred, just imagine what the outcome will be if in the assembly this Friday you should suddenly... <laughs> And now, let's hear from another of our candidates for class president, Fred Parrish. Well, I think our student government is a fine thing. Uh, uh, but l let me tell you about a government is a fine thing. I've heard thing. Fred try to make speeches uh, before, and so help right, me, I can't understand what he's trying to say. As smart as he is, you'd think he'd be well, able to organize his material better. better. Maybe he's just scared. So what? So are Shirley and Dick, yet what they say makes sense. Too bad. Fred's a nice guy, but if he can't make speech, then he better... People want to know what they're voting for, Fred. And if you can't tell them, then you don't win. Gentlemen, we've called both of you in because you're the top two applicants. Now, uh, Mr. Parrish, I see here that you have a fine academic rating to recommend you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Parrish, uh, what kind of a job do you think you're best suited for in our organization? Well, I've thought and studied about that quite a bit, and, uh, well, I don't know. Or rather, well, it's so big, and I just don't quite know how to put it. Or rather, well, that is to really say what I mean, I... Yes, I, I see. Uh, Mr. Cummings, how about you? Uh, have you thought about what kind of job you'd like? Yes, sir, I have. I'd like to work in your production department and then in time work into your staff for industrial design. Well, Fred, there goes Joe Cummings saying the very same things you had in mind all the time, but just couldn't quite get across. You're as smart as Joe Cummings. The only difference is that Joe can express himself and communicate his ideas to others. And in this case, that simply means that he gets a job, and you, you're shown the door. This sort of thing can follow you all your life. Suppose in a few years that your club needs a speaker. Just what sort of a person are they going to be looking for? Say, Jim, are you still looking for a speaker for the luncheon Monday? Sure I am. Do you have a suggestion? Yeah, how about uh, Fred Parrish? He seems as well informed on this particular subject as uh, anyone around here. I'd thought about using him, but some of the boys vetoed the idea. Seems Fred's an expert in his field, all right, but he just can't seem to put across what he knows to an audience. With him, it's strictly one-way communication. He talks, but the way he talks, nobody listens. Yeah, you know, it seems funny that a fellow that has as much to say as he does hasn't learned to put it across to an audience. You mean all those things could happen to me just because I don't worry about my speech? They could happen. 
But it's not just a matter of worrying about your speech, it's doing something about it. I don't see how you can do much about it. Either you're a good talker or you're not. That isn't right, Fred. You can develop good speech. For instance, let's imagine that you've just enrolled in a class where speech is taught. It's your first oral report, and, well, you're a little nervous. You think every member of the audience is sneering at you. And you're quite sure that when you open your mouth, no sound will come out. But it does, and you're on your way. After you've given your report, the teacher and the class offer suggestions for improvement. Well, I don't know. But it seems to me that if he'd look at us more often, it would be more interesting. And as you listen and relax, the thought begins to seep in that, gee, this isn't so bad after all. As a matter of fact, it's fun. The next time you speak, you're still a little scared, but you notice a few friendly faces in the audience. Maybe now you even try a gesture or two. Oh, they probably won't look or feel too natural at first, but they soon will. And the nice thing about trying them out in class is that everyone else is trying out things too. You try to build up your self-confidence through practice and preparation. You practice using gestures. You work on voice projection. You become aware of how important speech is in projecting your personality to others. And you soon find out that there's a lot more to communication than just saying the words. You're taught that voice quality and projection, eye contact, And speech organization are big factors in effective communication. You learn how your voice operates. You become acquainted with a variety of speech situations, such as oral reporting, conducting a meeting, group discussion, public speaking, conversation, and interview. And very important, you learn that listening is also an essential part of communication. Well, Fred, so far you've been doing all the listening. I hope what I've said helps to answer your question as to why you should study speech. Yes, sir, it does. I never thought about it quite that way before. Thanks a lot. Well, there goes Fred Parrish. And how far he goes in life will depend a lot on how well he can speak. But how about you? You have many opportunities to improve your speech right now. In speech classes, in everyday conversations and in class discussions. Are you making each one of these opportunities a real challenge for bettering your speech? You should. You should study speech. You should practice good speaking habits. You should use this powerful medium of communication. Remember, your speech and your success may go hand in hand. Consider it. <laughs>